Before we dive in, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Okay, here we go. So, did Nikki Haley just throw some major shade at Trump, or is she just trying to make it rain in her own campaign? If you're out of the loop, let me fill you in. Haley, the former South Carolina governor, recently pulled no punches as she criticized Trump for allegedly using over $50 million. Yes, you heard that right. $50 million of political contributors' money on his own legal expenses. Talk about a shopping spree, right? But wait, there's more. She also hinted that Trump's limited campaign schedule might be due to, you guessed it, a lack of funds. Now isn't that a plot twist? I mean, who'd have thought we'd see the day when Trump, of all people, might be pinching pennies? But the cherry on top of this political Sunday is Haley's audacity to call out Trump's actions as unconscionable. Now that's a word you don't hear every day in the political arena, especially not from someone who once served in Trump's administration. Well, Nikki, we all know money doesn't grow on trees. But it seems you're hoping it'll fall from Trump's pockets right into your campaign fund. Now, despite Trump's winning streak in the Iowa caucuses and New Hampshire primary, Haley is not giving up. Talk about persistence. It's like watching a Chihuahua trying to take on a Great Dane. You've got to admire the spirit, if not the strategy. So, what's the game plan here? Well, Haley seems to be pinning her hopes on a strong showing in South Carolina and on Super Tuesday. I suppose when you're up against a juggernaut like Trump, you've got to play the long game. But here's the kicker. Recent polls show Trump with a pretty hefty lead in South Carolina. It's like watching someone try to climb a mountain, only to realize halfway up that it's actually Mount Everest. But does that deter Haley? Not one bit. In fact, she's doubling down, expressing her commitment to staying in the race and improving her performance. You've got to give her credit for determination. It's like she's standing in a hurricane, refusing to budge while everyone else is running for cover. And why is she doing this? Well, she's convinced that she is a better candidate than Trump to defeat President Joe Biden and bring control to the GOP. It's kind of like watching someone challenge the school bully. You're not sure if they're brave or just plain crazy. But hey, who are we to judge? Maybe Haley knows something we don't. Maybe she's got a secret weapon up her sleeve. Or maybe she just enjoys a good challenge. Either way, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. So Nikki, you're planning to take on the Trump train with what? A Haley hoverboard? Good luck with that. And then there's the small matter of President Biden, because, you know, defeating Trump is just the appetizer. The main course is getting control of the GOP and beating Biden. So Haley is not just content with throwing shade at Trump, she's also got her sights set firmly on Biden. In her mind, she's the better candidate to take on the current president. She seems pretty confident, doesn't she? But as we've seen, confidence can be a tricky thing in politics. Now, let's not forget about Haley's criticism of Biden's handling of Israel's war in Gaza. She's been pretty vocal about her disapproval, calling out the president for his move to place sanctions on violent Israeli settlers in the West Bank. She definitely isn't holding back on her opinions, and it's clear that she's trying to position herself as the tough-on-foreign-policy candidate. But here's the thing. Haley's argument that she's the better candidate to defeat Biden, well it's not without its flaws. For one, it assumes that the majority of the GOP and the American public agree with her views on foreign policy, and that's a big assumption. Also, it's worth pointing out that while Haley is busy criticizing Biden's foreign policy, she hasn't really given us a clear picture of what her own foreign policy would look like. I mean, it's easy to point out the faults in others, but what are her solutions? We're all ears, Nikki, and let's not forget the elephant in the room, or should I say, the donkey. Because if Haley wants to take on Biden, she's going to have to convince a lot of Democrats to switch sides. And given her track record and her current stance on a number of key issues, that's going to be a tough sell. Well, Nikki, we're all for ambition, but maybe focus on one battle at a time, eh? Or is multitasking the new trend in politics? Now, let's not forget the roller coaster relationship between Haley and Trump. One minute she's criticizing him, the next she's supporting him. It's like a soap opera without the soap. The love-hate saga between Nikki Haley and Donald Trump is a head-scratcher. One moment she's throwing shade at Trump for his role in the Capitol riots and the next she's back to singing praises of the man. Talk about having your political cake and eating it too. Let's take a walk down memory lane. Following the Capitol riots, Haley distanced herself from Trump, declaring that his political career was over. But then, in a classic political flip-flop, she was back in Trump's corner stating that she would consult with him before deciding on a 2024 presidential run.
Haley's back-and-forth stance on Trump has not been without consequences. Trump himself has pointed out her flip-flop attitudes, accusing her of criticizing him one moment and uncriticizing him the next. And let's not forget the time when Trump declined Haley's request for a one-on-one -on -one meeting at his Mar-a-Lago resort. Ouch, that must have hurt. But despite the ups and downs, Haley has continued to navigate the turbulent waters of her relationship with Trump. She has even managed to maintain a positive relationship with members of Trump's family. Now that's what we call political acrobatics. Recently, Haley slammed Trump for spending over $50 million of political contributors' money on his legal expenses. She called it unconscionable, suggesting that Trump's limited campaign schedule was due to a lack of funds. So there you have it, folks. Nikki Haley, the woman who can't seem to decide whether she's Trump's friend or foe. But hey, who needs consistency in politics, right? So, is Nikki Haley the new stand-up comedian in town? Or is she just practicing her roast for the next White House Correspondents' Dinner? Let's take a moment to appreciate the punchlines she's been delivering. Remember when she called out Trump for spending $50 million on legal expenses like an extravagant kid in a candy store? Or when she hinted at Trump's limited campaign schedule as a result of his fiscal follies? But the real zinger? Her steadfast commitment to stay in the race, despite Trump's lead in South Carolina. It's like watching a turtle take on a hare. Only this time the turtle's got a mouthful of sass and a whole lot of determination. And let's not forget her bold claim to be a better candidate to defeat President Joe Biden and take control of the GOP. It's like watching a chess game only the pieces are politicians and the board is the entire United States. And what about her critique on Biden's handling of Israel's war in Gaza? It's almost like she's auditioning for a spot on Saturday Night Live with her political one-liners. Stay tuned for our next episode, folks where we'll find out if Nikki Haley has decided to challenge Trump to a rap battle. Until then, keep laughing at the circus that is politics.